Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about mental practice. Um, so when we talk about mental practice, what we mean is cognitive rehearsal of a physical skill in the absence of overt physical movements. Uh, or another definition, active cognitive or mental rehearsal of a skill where a person may think about the cognitive or procedural aspects of the skill or engage in visual or kinesthetic imagery. Uh, so essentially what we mean is the physical body is still and mentally we are practicing or rehearsing some physical skill. Um, so performers or athletes might mentally rehearse before competition or performance. Um, we might mentally visualize a challenging task before practicing it, um, or maybe it's something that we're nervous about or have anxiety about. We might mentally go through the process of completing the task or the action or the competition, whatever it might be, um, or mentally repeating well-executed actions to reinforce the movement that produced the desired result. So maybe you had a performance or a competition and it went exceptionally well, you can rehearse, you can go back and repeat that process and kind of feel in your body what it felt like when you did it perfectly, when you got that end result that you wanted. Um, so in for the use of mental practice and skill acquisition, um, physical practice is more effective than mental practice, but mental practice is more effective than no practice. Um, we can combine the two and have a very good result. Um, in studies where they compare two groups, one that had 100% physical practice and another group who had 50% physical, 50% mental, but both with the same quantity of practice, the half and half group did almost as well as the entirely physical practice group. So imagine you're not splitting your practice time in half, but rather physically practice as much as you have time for or as much as you're physically able, and then use mental practice in addition to that. And think of the result that you'll get. Think of how much more effective learning is going to be in that situation. Uh, cognitive problem solving is an important aspect of all skill acquisition. Um, and so that's part of why mental practice is so useful is because it's an opportunity to practice those cognitive skills that are part of learning that um, new skill or learning that movement. Um, and so, <clears throat> so you can practice that both mentally and physically. In a rehabilitation setting, mentally, mental practice is especially useful. Uh, it's used as a therapeutic tool and it has lots of advantages. Uh, for one, it enables interventions to begin early in recovery when movement is restricted. So when movement is restricted early on, like maybe following a surgery, it's really useful to use mental practice because maybe physical therapy can't really begin yet because you're not cleared for sufficient movement at that point. So mental practice is great in that situation. Mental practice is free can be done anywhere and it involves no safety risks. So there are a lot of advantages and especially considering how effective mental practice is, it's worth adding to a rehabilitation protocol. Um, so in studies where uh, patients followed a mental practice protocol in addition to their regular physical therapy, um, so a regular practice for 30 minutes twice a week, um, those patients had significant improvements compared to the other patients who simply had uh, the physical practice, the physical therapy um, aspect. So everybody had that same standard of care, but when we add in mental practice, there's a, a very big advantage. Um, so for people who are rehabilitating, mental practice can include all sorts of different things. Uh, you can imagine the task that you want to return to once your injury is healed. Um, so if you're a musician or an athlete or anybody, but you have some kind of task that's important to you that you want to be able to complete without pain, imagine that task. Imagine everything about it, what it feels like to sit in the seat um, or what it feels like to hold the bat, what it feels like to put your foot on the ground, like really imagine deeply and feel it and be in that situation and imagine that task. Um, you can also imagine uh, tasks you haven't done before and would like to do. Um, you can also imagine your physical therapy sessions. You can go through entirely 
additional physical therapy sessions all through mental practice and you'll get the benefit from it that well close to the benefit from it that you also get from your physical practice um you can also experiment and uh, use kinesthetic imagery so you're imagining how it really feels in your body to move and use the injured limb or whatever you're rehabilitating in specific ways and make sure that you're imagining doing these things without pain or dysfunction. That's the idea is like maybe uh, you have an ankle injury. You don't want to be mentally practicing where your ankle is hurting and you're having a problem. You want to imagine walking and jumping and running and playing and uh, doing all of these things without pain and without dysfunction. And that's going to help stimulate um, learning of the motor skill, but it's also going to facilitate healing. Um, so then the question is, why does mental practice work? Um, so there are three generally accepted hypotheses to explain this phenomenon. Uh, none of them are conclusive in the literature, but they all have literature to support them. So these are widely accepted theories. Uh, so a neuromuscular hypothesis, the brain activity hypothesis, and a cognitive hypothesis. Okay, so starting with the neuromuscular hypothesis, um, this hypothesis is based on the fact that we actually have muscle activation when we imagine movements. So we could be laying completely still, flat on, on your bed or the floor or wherever you are. You can be laying completely still and imagining the movement that you want to practice. And while you're doing that, your muscles, the ones that would cause that movement, are actually activating. And we can measure that through EMG. So the hypothesis here is that the appropriate neuromotor pathways involved in an action are activated during mental practice based on that electrical activity that we observe in the musculature. Uh, the activation primes the neuromotor pathways that will be activated to perform the skill and increases the likelihood that the person will perform the action appropriately with reduced demands on the motor control system. So essentially, when we're mentally practicing, we are making the neuromotor pathways that we use to complete that movement more and more strong. We're strengthening those pathways and solidifying those pathways so that when we actually are completing that movement, that those pathways are in place and we're more likely to complete the movement correctly without error, without hesitation, uh, because we're reducing the demands on the motor control system because it's so well rehearsed, it's so well practiced that we have less to kind of figure out as we're working on it in physical practice. Uh, the second hypothesis is similar, except in regard to the areas of the brain that are activating. Uh, so mental practice is effective because of neurophysiological similarities between the imagined and the actual movements. So essentially, when we imagine moving and we're going through mental practice, we're engaging the same parts of the brain that we use when we actually physically go through those movements. Um, so there's the functional equivalence hypothesis, which is very similar the idea that imagined and actual movements have similar neurophysiological bases. Okay, cognitive hypothesis. Um, so learning a motor skill requires a high degree of cognitive activity about what to do, and that would be in the early stages of learning, and error correction in the later stages of learning. Um, and mental practice is an effective way to practice the cognitive aspects of a skill without the pressure that accompanies physical performance. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, um, when we're learning a new skill or rehabilitating, um, there are a lot of cognitive uh, practices required. So there's a lot of cognitive activity about what to do, how to do it, you know, making decisions, um, depending on what the task is. And so when we practice mentally, we're practicing what is the procedure here? What do we need to do? What decision do we make when this situation happens? What decision do we make in that situation? Um, and so we're able to practice all of that without the pressure that sometimes goes with physical performance. Like in the case of rehabilitation, that pressure could be that you're afraid of going too far or of hurting yourself. 
Um, or in athletics, it could be that there's pressure and performance um, during practice because maybe you're alongside teammates or coaches or scouts or um, whoever might be there that you might have pre- you might feel pressure to perform better. So mental practice gives us the the opportunity and the space to think and make mistakes and make different decisions and kind of contemplate what those outcomes might be in a low pressure situation. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.